Hello everyone, Kanasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. I'm doing this voiceover almost immediately after yesterday's one, or yesterday's episode, so let's see how this goes. Hopefully I don't run out of things to say. But what we are going to be doing is joining exactly where we finished in the last episode. We began our burn over to Gateway, and what we're going to be doing at the very beginning of this episode is going to be finishing that burn so we can go to that far-flung gas giant and... I'm tripping over my words, and we can see what wonders it does have in store. So, I really should talk about why Gateway? Why are we going to Gateway? Why is Gateway the planet that I want to visit next? Well, Gateway has a very interesting moon, and the good old people at Research and Development at the Road Planetary Space Alliance have decided that we really do want to be going and investigating Comb. Comb is one of the moons of Gateway, it's not the closest, there is one closer called Proxima, but it is very much lathe in the stock system. It is very much like lathe in the fact that it does have an atmosphere. So it's kind of analogous to Titan as well. But as far as I'm aware, I, well, I don't know. I'm not sure if it has a breathable atmosphere or not, but it does have an atmosphere. And it does also have local, not fauna, flora. There are, there are plants growing on comb. So that is highly indicative that it might be a good candidate for a future colonization project that we will be doing in this series. Obviously, one of the main features of this series is going to be going around and colonizing most of the Tempest system, and of course, making our way back to Kerbal, where we are going to try and colonize some of the planets and moons in the Kerbal system as well. We're obviously quite a way off of that yet, because we're only really just going interplanetary with crew. This is our second crewed interplanetary mission, and it is... It's still relatively crude. Not not crude as in it's crude by people, but crude as in, you know, like crude oil. That, that sort of crude. We will be hopefully building better interplanetary craft in the future. Obviously, there is a lot of the technology tree left to unlock, which we will be looking into. But we did complete our burn over to Gateway. Now what I'm trying to do is we are doing a bit of a mid-course correction because we were going to be, well, we were entering Gateway Sphere of Influence. However, we were going to be quite away from that giant gas giant. And what I would quite like to do is get a little bit closer. So whilst I was fiddling around with my maneuver node to see where exactly we would be ending up, I did notice that we were going to get an encounter with Comb on the way over. And I thought, oh, absolutely brilliant we can use that to our advantage. So it turns out, if we get a flyby of comb on the way round to Gateway, well, that will actually give us enough of a gravity assist to capture into a Gateway orbit. I believe it's very similar to what people use Tylo for in the stock system. I've personally never done that because I haven't actually really played an awful lot of the stock system. I, I kind of moved on to modded planets before getting very advanced in any careers in stock. So. It'll be nice because it's going to save us on a bit of Delta V to actually capture at the system. At Gateway, we won't have to fire up that Vern Pulsed Fission engine when we're there to capture us around that gas giant, which will be very cool. But it is going to take an awful long time to actually get over to Gateway. So because of that, we have frozen the vast majority of the Kerbals on the ship. Well, five out of the six in deep freeze chambers. That way, we're not going to be using any of our supplies on our way over. It should hopefully mean we don't have to spend as much electric charge. We can run the nuclear reactor at the rear end of this ship at a very low power just to sort of sustain us on the journey over. However, you may notice that poor Peter Kerman is going to be a solitary Kerbal on his own, the only one that has not been frozen on this journey. Now, the reason why I wanted one Kerbal to stay is because we do have a research laboratory on this ship. So, for the transfer over to Gateway, we did pick up a bit of science around road, and we've also picked up a bit of science on the journey around the Tempest system. So what we did with that is we threw that all into the research laboratory, and Peter Kerman is working very diligently in order to send back science back to road. Every time we complete a load of data in there, we do get 400 signs that we are going to be sending back. And I believe we did that maybe about four or five times on the way over to Gateway. So that's going to be an awful lot of science. And really, at the moment, the one thing that I'm lacking is science. I need a lot of science in order to build some of the tastier engines from the far future technology mod pack 
and of course to build some of the tundra stuff as well yes no there there is an awful lot and some of those do cost a lot i think the the end node where you get the, the very very powerful torch ship kind of engines well that's going to cost us ten thousand science so any science that i can get well, I am certainly going to grab it. And unfortunately, yes, because of that, that does mean that Pizza Kerman has to go crazy on his own on the way over. It's a little bit like the Martian, I, I guess. He's, he's stuck in space on his own. Although he does have people that he could go and unthaw, probably more akin to maybe the film Passenger. Or is it Passengers? The one with, I can't even remember who the actor was. Was it Chris Pratt and someone else? I, I, I can't remember. I watched that film when it came out in the cinema and I've not watched it since because uh, I, I didn't really enjoy it. But that's, that's, that's beside the point. Anyway, we have now unthawed Ziggy Kerman III and Maximus Kerman because we are now at Gateway Sphere of Influence. And one thing that I did do is for this mission, usually when I do these long missions, what I would like to do is send off other missions at the same time. Obviously, we have multiple missions going on at once. However, I have sat around the EVE-class interplanetary vessel and I have stayed with it the entire duration. Reason being is the last time I sent a crewed interplanetary craft, which I think I sent over to Rock, yes, a quite a few episodes ago, well, Deep Freeze was a little bit wonky and it meant the Kerbals disappeared from the game. Well, they didn't disappear from the game, they, they just disappeared from the vessel. So in order to prevent that from happening with this one, I sat around the vessel and I stayed with it, but it does mean that we couldn't do, say, things over at Armstrong, maybe build up some more fishing pellets. We couldn't send other vessels into planetary. Couldn't do anything whilst we were focusing on this mission, which is a bit of a shame because obviously we want to be doing things at all times. If we are doing things at all times, then that means we're constantly getting stuff done. But it doesn't really matter in this save. In, in say, like an RP1 save, that would be more important because you kind of do have timelines, uh, dead limits, Time limits, even deadlines and time limits. Dead limit is a is a is a drama bass song. No, we, we don't have dead limits. Absolutely not. But yeah, with this, because it's a science save, we don't really need to worry about that. The 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 year that we're on doesn't really bother me. The only reason why we would ever have to be paying attention to time at all is obviously Kerbal's supplies. We we don't want to be killing our Kerbals on their space stations and all of that because that would be truly terrible but we have now made it to gateway and what i'm going to be doing for the remainder of this video is basically plotting out how we are going to orbit around gateway so that we still have enough delta v to actually get back home because obviously we do not want to strand these six kerbals all the way over at gateway i think we've got two of our original starting four here so it would be really bad if we did that no we want to get them back home eventually. And one weird thing about the Delta V of this, you may notice on the bottom left where the Delta V readouts are for the stages, it says zero meters per second for both of those. And the stages are bugged. And because of that, it means that I can't see how long it is going to take my burn time. So that's why I've got Flight Engineer up with burn up because that for some reason is actually reading how much we are going to be able to burn. This happened at the end of the last episode, and it will continue on for a while. It does eventually fix itself, but it was a little bit strange. And to begin with, I was kind of wondering, how the hell do I know when I need to start my burn? Because I've got no idea what the thrust to weight ratio is on this, how, how long the burn is going to be. It's going to be really tricky, but luckily, Flight Engineer, Kerbal Engineer Redux does have a readout for that, which did actually work. Because... Mechjeb also failed as well. It wasn't just Kerbal Engineer. No, it wasn't just the stock system. Mechjeb was also being a bit balked. Really bizarre. Not entirely sure what was causing that, but we did at least have a workaround. Now what we are doing is we are trying to figure out a nice circular orbit around Gateway where we will be able to release the Manta that is attached on the side of the EVE-class interplanetary vessel so that it can go and visit Comb. And we are going to get another flyby of Comb because this is going to help bring our orbit down. We are going to use that moon as much as possible to try and capture us into a relatively nice low orbit, which we will then circularize. And hopefully, with a little bit of luck, that is going to be more than enough that we're going to be able to get a good transfer back to road at the end of this entire mission. Which would be, obviously, as I have mentioned, for very nice. But here, once again, as I did say, we are going to zip by comb. We are going to visit that later, but that will be in the next episode. I was planning on putting this all together in this episode, but actually 
it took a little bit too long. Like the episode, as I've said, I'm gonna try and make them about 12 minutes long. I would have wanted to do the comb visit as well. It would have pushed this video probably to about, I don't know, 22 minutes, which is obviously going against what I have been doing recently. But there we go, we have now got ourselves a nice circular-ish orbit around Gateway. We can bring up Maneuver Planner and we can see that it's only gonna cost us 2,381 meters per second in order to get back to road, which is fabulous because we have almost 5,000 meters per second left looking at Kerbal Engineer Redux. That is gonna be in about 91 days, which is going to be more than enough time to allow our spacecraft, our little Manta on the side here, to go and do a bit of a visit to Comb. Unfortunately, I, well, I'm moving the crew over here and we do detach the Manta. One critical thing that I forgot about this craft is that I forgot to put any life support on it. So our Kerbals will be able to survive for a few days. However, not very long. So if we want to get them out on Comb, well, what we're gonna do is we are going to plot out a maneuver with this. So I know how long it's going to be until we need to actually burn for comb. Then we are going to dock back to the ship, which does have life support. We'll release it at the last minute, burn for comb, try and do our mission very quickly and get back to the main E vessel before those Kerbals die, essentially. And it should be possible. There we go, we can see we've got our maneuver and with that, we are docking the ship back to the main vessel. And that will be it for this episode. In the next one, what we are going to be doing is sending this over to Comb and seeing what that mysterious moon does have in store for our Kerbals. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, why not give it a like? If you've really enjoyed it and want to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I've been Karnasa, and I will see you later. <laughs>